please welcome to the stage Portland's king of late night, Mr. Ross Angeles himself, Aaron Ross, and Mama Ross. Welcome back to Mama's house. I'm Aaron Ross, your comedy boss. Welcome to Who's the Ross. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us live once again, baby. Yes, we are back at Mama's house, and we are feeling good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Very excited uh, for tonight's show. We got an awesome, totally awesome show for you guys tonight. Check it out right over here. Baby, this lineup is sweet because we have a music legend on the program tonight from one of my absolute favorite bands of all time. He don't use jelly. And baby, do you realize how great he is? Steven Drozd of the Flaming Lips is with us for a two-part, look at that, a two-part interview, yeah! Uh, and we'll be totally awesome and rocking with some interactive games, because you know how we do, we like to play with you. So we got some super fun games that you guys can play along with and win yourself some prizes. So we got the goods tonight, baby, and as you can see down here, there's our summer camp special. Now we all know, four months into this whole gosh darn pandemic, and everything is canceled, including summer camp. And that's why we here at the Ross household figured, why not invite everyone to the great indoors here at Mama's house, and we turn it into our own summer camp called Camp Mama Alita. That's right, named after our red head scout, and I'm going to bring her up here because she's not only my mom, she's also my co-host. Please say hello, everybody. Here she is, Mama Ross. Come on, Mama, get up here. Watch out, Kanye. Yes, Yay! Mom is in the house. Watch your mouth. Oh, Mama, good to be back with you. Yes. Sis. At your house. Yes. That we hang out at all the time and can't get away from each other. No, right. <laughs> We're live and alive. That's right, Mama. That's right. We are live right now with you guys, and we're so excited to have everybody here yes. at Camp Mama Alita, your summer camp yes. that's here for all of our friends during the pandemic. And uh, before we tour you around the camp, we want to give everybody camper nicknames, right? You're the Redhead Scout, a.k.a. Bat Mom, and me... I'm Aaron Ross, your comedy boss, mm -hmm. number one from day one, A1, baby, because I, I got that sauce yeah. as Ross the boss, a.k.a. SPF, yeah, but we wanted to give some, check it out, camper names to you guys. So see which one of these fits for you. If you like drinking and getting lost, smearing off the beaten path. Like many of us, you're hiding your head because you ain't got no dough, go for broke. Mm -hmm. Or if you love our program, maybe your nickname is Laffadil. Or check this one out right here. Yeah, if you're a college friend and fan, Dorm McDonald. Next up, we've got Thug Fur if you're tough but you love nature. That's right, baby. Son Bernie Sanders if you're politically active but also got fair skin like me, one of my old nicknames. Then for the vegetarians, we've got Soy Scout and, of course, Dorcupine, which works for all of us because we're all a bunch of dorks enjoying our time here at Camp Mama Alita. hey Those are our camper nicknames. We hope that you guys enjoy and have picked one there in the comments. Now, yes. let's tour you around. But first, hey, mm -hmm. Ranger Rick, show us the camp map. There you go. The camp map to Camp Mama Alita. Look, it. it's all oh. within the grounds of Mom's house. As you can see, it's magical. We are here. Oh. There's Couch Lake, we can go take a dip. Oh. There's the dogstacle course when we need a little activity. We can always go to the sing-along stove and have some indoor s'mores. Of course, there's the counselor cabins. And then, a place no one has been to in the past four months. Mm. It is the door to mm. the unknown. Mm. That's right, the door to the unknown where no one goes. Uh, at least not during these times, right, Mama? Can't yeah. go out there. No. But inside here, we have a ton of fun. And yes. now that you guys know about the camp, let's tour you around. I think it's about yes. time, Mama, that we yes. take a dip. And yes. let's row over to our next activity. Let's go to Couch Lake. Come on, Mama. Oh my gosh, wow. It's the rapids. Mom, these are rapids. Oh, Bro, no. Mom, oh no, Mom. They're rapids. Oh, they're rapidly making our audience leave. Oh no. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, you, Mom, oh. it's over. We've we, made it to our next destination. Oh. And luckily... It was touch and go. Luckily, we avoided Whoa. all the shark pups. Whoa. 
In fact, here's oh. one right now. Look, Mom, a shark pup. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. <sighs> Luckily, he's friendly. Yes. He's my bestie, Kanye yes. Westie. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Mama, let's get to our arts and craft station, which uh, is right here. It's time uh, for some arts and masks, Mama. And uh, Camp Mama Alita yes. has lots of crafts. Yes, that's right. Well, we make arts and masks here. So yes. we've got our macaroni yes. masks. We've dyed our macaroni green here. Green and red. And red. And Mama, show them your mask and right there. And I am so proud of my mask. Look at that. I made a little smiley face, just so people know how, how much she appreciates you wearing a mask. And my mask, yes. for our arts and masks, takes the same tone as mine, is a uh, thank you message to all of the medical workers uh, out there helping to make a difference. Yes. There you go. We thank uh, you. So big you. thanks. Love. All right, Mama. Love. Arts and masks is over. Oh, oh. Let's hop on over to the dog oh. stickle course. Okay. We got to be careful. All right. Uh oh. I'm ready. Don't trip ready. on any puppers okay. over here. Okay, here we go. Follow us down here. All right. What's down here? Rick, okay. what's down here, Ranger oh. Rick? Holy cow. Oh. oh, no. Mom, watch out. Oh. You got to oh. get around. Uh oh. Kanye I'm, West I'm the shark around. pup. Uh -oh. Here we go. Uh -oh. All right. <laughs> but, Mama, we really worked up an appetite. Uh, oh, so now we that we're over yes. at the COVID fire stove, yes, yes. I think it's time that we enjoy. Some indoor s'mores. That's right, yes. friends. Some yes. indoor s'mores. s'mores. Let's roast these up. Ah, oh, lovely. There we go. We have two fires here. Yeah, there you go. Yes, we are, we are, have bun bountiful. It's the bount. Oh, oh, mine's on uh -oh. fire. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> Perfect. Uh oh. There you go. I'm just gonna pop the whole thing. In. Uh oh. Uh oh. Whoa, uh -oh. That's a hot one. Oh, That's a hot that one. Hot? Been a minute since I've done oh. that. Uh oh. Mm. Oh. 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 Let's turn off the oh, COVID fire stove. Yeah. You good? All right. I'm going to put it on my bun. Oh, it's not a bun. A bun. <laughs> you guys, mom's British, so in, 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 in Britain, they call graham crackers buns. <laughs> or at least that's how we're rationalizing it. <laughs> yes, moving right along. Yes, mother. You know what? I yes. think yes. we should end tonight's monologue at Camp Mama Lita oh, by singing a song. A song with a, oh, a good yes. message that can yes. help our campers as they try to yes. figure out this entire pandemic. Yeah. It's called yeah. Wear a Mask, and yeah. it's set to the tune of Kumbaya. Come on, everybody, sing along with us. And mom, yeah. count us off. Okay, one, two, three. Wear, wear a, a mask, mask, you dumb, wear a mask. Wear a mask, you dumb, wear a mask. Someone's coughing, oh Lord, wear a mask. Oh Lord, wear a mask. Someone's sneezing, my Lord, wear a mask. Someone's wheezing, my Lord, wear a mask. Someone's sneezing, my Lord, again, wear a mask. Oh Lord, wear a mask. Good job, Mom. Thank you. And it's got a great that was message. Fun. That was fun. I love singing camp songs. Nothing like a good COVID fire song it, for all the campers it is great. joining us here at Camp Mama Alita. Yes. And while you guys are coming over to Camp Mama Alita today, and maybe you've been with us every single week yes. here on Who's the Ross, or maybe this is your first time, you know what? We've got friends that like to take on fun video challenges we do. And some of them have already made their own great indoors at oh, their houses. So yes. we challenge them with our camp in challenge. Yes. We said, hey, set a tent up in the living room, make a pillow fort, hop into the tub like it's a lake, or make some macaroni art. And they did. And we got an they did. <laughs> and they did. So we want to share it with you. So please, everybody yes. enjoy our camp in challenge. The most important thing about camping is to be well supplied. 
Hey, Odin, can you get me another beer from the cooler? What? Why? Go get your water from the refrigerator. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> You're the best. Camping with Pods. <laughs> In the deep, solemn confines of my small homestead. Just off the beaten path of Stark Street, and over a mighty thoroughfare known as the Great 205, I cozy up to the warmth of the coil, roasting a fresh ear of corn before heading out to the lake. God, it's peaceful out here. Hell. Maybe someday you can join me. Canoe, canoe to shore, Mom. Help me out. Come on. Come on. We got to get to the next segment on the program. Mom, by, by the law of physics, the way that you're paddling and I'm paddling, we're just moving in circles. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Who's the Ross, a.k.a. Moving in Circles. Ah, oh, that was delightful. Thanks for sending in your videos. They were just just wonderful. That's right. Thanks, everybody, for sending Very in your funny. camping challenge yes. videos and getting down yes. with us. Thanks for coming to Who's the Ross, everybody. Yes. For those yes. who are new to the program, yes. allow me to reintroduce herself. Yes. Her name is Mom, M-O to the M. That's right, Mama Ross, yes. my co-host with the most most. I'm double A, Ron, Aaron Ross, your comedy boss. And to my lefty is my bestie, Kanye Westy. And you know what? Yes. Whenever we got yay yay around, we need that close up. It's time for the Kanye cam. And it's a cat dog. He's licking his cat feet. <laughs> He's a funny pup. He's, well, that wasn't the best intro, yay. This is a little anticlimactic. All right, let's go back to the normal uh, cam. We'll be back with him later. We, yeah. he, he, you know what? He's just we simmering. He's simmering up. We're going to bubble yes. over later. Yes. Hey, thanks for tuning yes. in, everybody. Uh, this is yes. Who's the Ross Late Night Talk Show. This is yes. our 18th show from ah, your house, Mom. Ah. Number 18 and number 797 wow. overall. That's cool. Wow. Cool, blimey. That's cool, blimey. That's we get we to do. interview so many amazing That's people. Right. We, we've had yes. Carlos Alas Rocky from Reno 911. That's right. Uh, we've had Brent Forrest, who wrote for The Simpsons in The Office. Yes. Uh, Ishmael Butler from yes. Shabazz Palace yes. and Diggable Plans. Yes. We've had so many amazing guests on the show. And every guest has brought their top game, has brought sparkle and joy to all of us. And I thank you all. <laughs> That wasn't that a joke. Was such a that, no, <laughs> I know it was a legit message. Yes. Well, speaking yes. of sparkle and joy, this guest, yes. uh, we're so excited to, oh, to call him to mom's house, yes. and we know he's going to bring yes. that to you guys. Yes. We're so, we, there was so much we want to talk to him about. He agreed to do a yes. two-part interview. Yeah. But let's get to part one, friends yes. from one of the greatest bands of all time. Yeah. Here is Stephen Droz of the Flaming Lips. Stephen, get in here. Come on into mom's house, buddy. Get over here. Thank Hello. you for coming over to Mom's house. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm really happy to see you guys. It's a, uh, you know, weird times. We're all cooped up, but it's cool to see you guys and hang out and talk about whatever we're going to talk about. Yeah, Glad super cool. Uh, yeah. And from your, uh, looks like home studio, right? This is my, uh, at my house, I have like a little office slash studio. And, you know, I've got, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a nerd, there's some cool vintage synths and Crazy Krumar Stratus and keyboards, and there's the uh, painting for uh, the cover of At War with the Mystics that Wayne gave me for Christmas years ago. Oh, and, so cool. And see the drum kit, behind, oh, drum kit behind me is on some different stuff there. I don't know if you can actually see that very well, but yeah, so this is my little, my little space at home that I do stuff. You know. it's, where, it's where the magic happens, as they say. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm lucky, some magic does can happen from time to time. Like well, th time. thank you for the segue. You have made quite a bit of magic over the years. And I want to talk about over the years, 30 yeah. 
30, I, mean, I just said 30 lips, 30, 30, <laughs> 30 years you've been in Flaming Lips. Yeah, I, uh, next, uh, see, fall of 2021, it will have been 30 years that I've been in the Flaming Unbelievable. Lips. Unbelievable. So, yeah. Tell me about this collaboration that you have with Wayne Coyne, you know, you two together with Michael and yeah. a litany of great, as you would call them, friends, uh, I think, uh, <laughs> over, over the years. Tell us about this connection and collaboration, just how it feels now. I mean, to have a relationship that is longer than most marriages, that bands yeah. never get this far. Like, tell us about that. No, it's, it's uh, you know, we, we talk about it on a fairly regular basis that, how fortunate we are that things have turned out the way they turned out. You know, um, when I, when I joined the band originally, uh, I just, I signed on as the drummer because their drummer had quit and they were right. looking for a drummer. They saw a videotape of me playing with this other band. They found out where I lived and they, the Flaming Lips had become one of my favorite bands at that time. And all of a sudden Wayne Coyne and Michael Ivins show at your house and they ask you to go up to Oklahoma, <coughs> up to Oklahoma city from Norman. Norman's about 20 miles from Oklahoma city and go jam and so th that was it so I, I joined as the drummer uh, in the fall of 1991 and uh, Wayne and I figured out pretty quickly that we had similar uh, upbringings he's eight years older than me but he's got wow. four older siblings I had three older siblings and we just had very similar growing up experiences you know and uh, we had this connection through I don't know classic rock and all the 60s and 70s stuff um, it was just a real, you know, it was just a real natural fit. And, you know, they started to discover that I played piano and other stuff. And we just started doing more of that. And uh, mm. it was working out. And then we just got to a place where we're really, we're just really comfortable working on stuff together. But we, we've gone so long now that if I have an idea and I do something, say here in my little studio, and I ship it to them, and I get no response, I know that eh, I didn't really do much for him, you know, <laughs> and that's it. Oh, okay. And I'll go back to drawing board or whatever. And yeah. the same for him, if he yeah. sends me something and I don't jump right on it, he knows that I'm not, not that mm -hmm. into it. So mm -hmm. we have this, you know, it's a really easy going, uh, way of making music we, now, we do nowadays so well let me let me ask about that so you, you now you have a mode you know you can you can sort of read each other's minds right but what was the moment where you go oh this is my brother in music like is there a moment is there a recession or a song or an album where you go yep we're locked in well um i guess early on uh there was a song i had in it <clears throat> ended up being called chewing the apple of your eye it's on the transmissions from the satellite heart that's the first oh rad yeah and uh, I just kind of played it for him. This was like the summer of 92. And, you know, I was worried because he had that joke, like, what's the last thing the drummer said to the band? What? <laughs> hey, guys, I've got a new song. So um, <laughs> a, little, a little like that, you know, but. Um, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, I kind of played it for him. And he seemed interested and he came back with some lyrics that were even better than what I had. And that was the first time I really felt like, man, we, we might have some kind of connection here. And then the next big thing was when we started working on the soft bulletin stuff, there were just so many of these moments of, uh, you know, it was just like, wow, he's thinking that. And we, we went through a period where we were trading four track recordings back and forth. You know, you, people used to use four track cassette recorders to make your demos on before MP3s and computers for the youngsters out there. Yes, uh, that's right. So, we're old yeah. school. We get it. We're hip. We're cool. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You are the inventors of the rock and roll bubbles. Yeah, that's uh, that's Wayne, man. He's uh, he's just always trying to figure out new stuff to do. You know, um, we were it was going to be Coachella was going to be the first time we did it, and so, and I was at that Coachella. Oh, you were he touched the bubble. He touched okay. the bubble. He touched the bubble. That is amazing. You yeah. know, it's, uh, it was great yes. that people responded to the bubble, but we kind of yes. got hosed on that show. I don't know if you remember, but oh, no. there were problems with the monitors. So we ended up I playing do. Uh -huh. song, literally. We only played yeah. two songs for our time slot. So, and we've never been back. They've never asked us back again. So No way. No, oh. no seriously. Ah. Yeah. Well, um, I'll talk to some people. <laughs> but, uh, the bubble, Coachella was the first show. Mm -hmm. Wayne and I had the idea a, a while before that, but we had a small period of time where we weren't playing any shows. So uh, he did like a little run through with just some of our friends backstage before we went on. At and Coachella, you're saying? At Coachella, yeah. Mm. And you know, we were all that shit crazy nervous, and <laughs> it, we just didn't know if it was going to go over, if someone's going to get hurt, or you know, whatever. And then I forget which newspaper the next day, that's the picture from Coachella, it's the Flaming Lips frontman Wayne Coyne in the bubble. That's like the image that for was, the day. So it's was like, win, win, yeah. And yes, yeah. yes. Since then he tries to do it every show if he can. And now the, the bubble has come back like a comet as you just played the late show with Stephen Colbert. Yeah, um, that's 
pretty wild. So we did, um, we did the Colbert Rapport back in 2009, and uh, he seemed to really like us, you know. Uh, so in 2012, he did his big, uh, what was it called? It was on the, a big uh, U.S. Uh, warship that was docked in New York City. It was called uh, Colbchella. That's what it was called. Oh. It was the Coachella, Colbchella. So you haven't been back to Coachella, but you did play Colbchella. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, Grizzly Bear and Us, and I think uh, Santa Gold was on that bill, and uh, we did that, and that went over really well, and after that, he, Wayne just, and Wayne and Stephen Colbert stayed in touch, they text each other, so uh, when all this insanity started to really, when we started to settle into this quarantine thing, we just texted them and said, hey, if we did this thing of us performing in these, you know, social distancing bubbles, would you guys be interested in, in airing it? And they came back and said, yeah, let's, let's, uh, if you guys can film something cool, we'll, we'll air it. And they went for it. So it's just as simple as that. So, it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's not, and it's not just Wayne. It was everybody in the band mm-hmm. and the audience were all in, in the bubbles. giant it's, bubbles. Exactly. So the idea being, um, you know, Wayne's actually discussed this, but it's not, you know, that's, it's not cost effective so far, the you know, what they the numbers they've crunched, but you could, you know, some of the bubbles are really big. You could have three or four people in one bubble. So if you come with your family, you could be in a bubble together and you're still social distancing from the other people. If you got 50 bubbles or a hundred bubbles into a venue, depending on how many people it is, you'd be enough, there'd be enough people to play a show for. So, um, you know, there's been some talk of that, but nothing concrete. Is, no way. You guys are at, he actually crunched the numbers yeah. on trying to maybe market and allow for bubbles in venues well, and places. Yeah. He, uh, Wayne and our manager, Scott, Scott Booker's our manager. He's like the voice of reason, you know, whenever Wayne gets one of these nuts ideas, <laughs> God has to talk him down from it. And then they kind of meet a happy middle ground, you know, by the end of it. But um, yeah, I think they're just, um, everyone, we're all trying to think of how we could, perform to people sure. and make money because you know a lot of our money comes from performing live so right and all of our shows have been pushed back a whole year so all the shows that we're going to have in april are going to happen in april of 2021 so crazy you know, we're trying to figure out a way you know there's just ever everyone's kind of scrambling in, in the same way that we are just trying to figure out how to how to navigate our way through not being able to play in tight you know in uh, closed in closed uh, confined club spaces so um, but the bubble, yeah, that, that could, that could be our, our savior, our savior. So that the flaming the lips, the savior yeah. of the pandemic, that is yeah. the headline we yes. all need to see. Yes. I mean, Col- Colbert's got to have a direct line to Fauci. Let's do it. Come on, Wayne. Oh, he probably does. He knows everybody. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, but, uh, just yeah Fauci back. and Wayne on the phone. This is the this is the future I've always wanted to see, mm-hmm. and it's happening now, 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 now. Well, you could say two and su- two scientists are racing, and it could be Burks and Fauci. You know, they're, oh my God! They're racing for Race the prize. The prize. <laughs> Look at us. Oh, my goodness. I'll, I'll mention it to Wayne. So. Oh, this Flaming Lips future is all that I've ever wanted. <laughs> is, it, is it true that the uh, drummer always gets the girl? No. No, no. <laughs> not, not at all. Not, um, it's usually the guitar player. So. Yeah, lead yeah. singer. So that's why you changed from the drums to the guitar, right? Nice, Mom. <laughs> I'll give you a rim right, shot. Right. Good I setup, Mom. Literally <laughs> never thought about it that way. I mean, I, I know yeah. I play guitar, but I don't consider myself like a guitar player per se, you know, like there are guitar player personalities, you know, like a Jimmy Page or a Jimi Hendrix or even a Johnny Greenwood, you know, from Radiohead. They're like these kind of personalities, you know, I don't really consider myself to be of that kind of personality if that makes sense oh i i listened to s- some of your guitar work and i i disagree i think okay <laughs> thank you you've been, yes. you've been told yes. by mom and when mom tells you <laughs> i'm telling you no back talk my buddy. <laughs> yeah no back talk <laughs> telling you off here yeah. um, uh obviously you have a refer uh, uh, a reverence for sergeant peppers mm-hmm you did. You and the band did a with your friends did a mm-hmm. uh, a remake of, of the record. Uh, mm-hmm. Tell me that impact that album had on you, and then what it's like to meet Sir Paul McCartney. Um, well, oh. Sergeant Pepper's the the whole record because um, my uh, older sister and two brothers were Beatles freaks, 
but they didn't actually go very deep cuts until later in life. So we had 67 to 70 laying around the house. We had mm, you know, sure. 66 or whatever laying around the house. We had revolver and rubber sole, but they didn't, my older brothers or sister, no one sat around listening to the Sergeant Pepper, which Sergeant Peppers, which is just kind of odd because they, yeah. they did the white album, but not Sergeant Peppers, you know, it's like certain Led Zeppelin records I know from the age of six and other ones I don't just because my older siblings. Anyway, uh, but the Beatles, you know, that goes back to my earliest musical memories that involved the Beatles. But the Sgt. Pepper's record itself, I wouldn't say I didn't really get get into that until my 20s. So that's not a, a lot of the Beatles stuff is part of my DNA, but not the whole record. So interesting. Uh, that, yeah, that's more Wayne. Wayne's with, like, with, with Sgt. Pepper. So to my 20s was when I I think I thought it was silly as a kid. And then I was just like, wait, what? OK. Yeah. We were this like a lot of the time during the making of Zyreka and the Soft Bulletin. We were listening to a lot of um, uh, the band Yes, the English prog rock, prog rock group Yes. You know, for a while it was not cool to like prog rock at all. You just couldn't like that kind of stuff. But now no one really cares, you know. So, but we were listening to that. We were listening to a lot of orchestral music. We were listening to Ennio Mar Marconi died yesterday. We were listening to a lot of this right. stuff. Um, yeah, and so we were trying to you know, just get out of the guitar rock thing and create something new. Um, um, now I'm rambling. What was I talking about? Oh, the Beatles. Yeah. So, but the Be the Beatles are always with us. You know, they're always, no matter what we're doing, it's. What's it's, your favorite Beatles record? What's the one that, that has resonated, has kind of, I mean, it always changes, but maybe today, today on uh, today, yes, yeah. Yeah. July of 2020, favorite it, Beatles album. That's tough because there's so much. Yeah. I'll go first. I'll say from. Abbey Road. Mom. Okay. Oh, oh, you're talking about the whole album. Yeah, right? and wow. an album, an album. Um, uh, I think Revolver is one of my favorites. Oh, excellent, good answer. <laughs> this is funny you said it, because Abbey Road and Revolver, they're kind of my, my two favorites. So, <laughs> Oh, cool. Abbey, yeah, Abbey Road has more of my favorite Beatles songs, but it's got a couple of clunkers, and then Revolver <laughs> has fewer. I appreciate of my your honesty with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A few, but Revolver has fewer of my absolute favorites, but there's not really any clunkers per se on that one. No, we mentioned mom being British. You said you had some questions for, for me, mom. Well, you mentioned that you're an uh, actress, actor, actress. And That's right. Yes, a yeah. long, long time all right, ago. All right. <laughs> okay, but can you just name like five, five or ten things that you were in? Because you, your face looks really familiar to me. <gasps> well, um, it, uh, Batman. Okay, Batman, the TV series. TV series, Batman, Londinium Larceny. That's right, you were on three episodes called the Londinium Larceny. Yes. Oh, you do bend my mind. Uh, Chrysler Theater, uh, the game. What, and, the, what uh, the game? Uh, the movie from the 90s? Uh, no. no, no, it was kind of like um, uh, uh, done, it done like a theater. Uh, oh, okay. You know, with one set and uh, very interesting, ahead of its time, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Laredo, I was a mail order bride. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh, no, well, my I, three sons. Oh, my three sons. I was the girlfriend of, I think, Robbie. Robbie. <laughs> oh, wow. So you've met, you've met yes. Paul McCartney. I met him once, yeah. Mm -hmm. Met him one time. Oh, you... where was that? Okay, so uh, if you want to hear the whole story, we were doing yeah, yes. this music program in England for a while. It might still be around called uh, Later with Jules Holland. Oh, sure. Oh, we sure, still watch that sure, show. We yeah. watch and that. mom's okay, British, yeah. so she yes, knows. Yes. Okay, we'll get to that. I have some questions for you. So um, <laughs> they, you know, it's like three or four musical groups, and yes, they just yes. kind of rotate. You know, the, yes. the oh, it's so cool. I, I like it. I like so, that. The night we were on, we did uh, Wait for a Superman and Race for the Prize, I think, were the two songs we did. Oh, cool. Mm. But uh, Sir Paul McCartney was playing, and David Gilmore was on guitar, and Ian Pace from Deep Purple was on drums, and it was it was just it was nuts, you know. So uh, we're just like, mm. ah, what do, we, what do we do? And yes. um, Paul McCartney was still hanging around when we finished up our bit. So I started playing. Maybe I'm amazed on the piano. I just kind of looked over and kind of winked, you know. Yeah. So, <laughs> so great. later on, the hallway, he goes, "Yeah, the cheeky one that was playing the playing." Yes. Uh, Yes. Yeah, maybe I'm amazed. I'm like, yeah, that's me. He goes, yes. oh, doing? And then we took a picture right there. And that was it. It was a very short meeting, but you know. Oh, you man, know. that is cool. Yeah, I was, I was kind of shaking, you know, but um, it was certainly pleasant. Yeah, so <laughs> it was a weird night. David Gilmore was there, Ian Pace. I forget 
that's the, crazy. Uh, yes, there were two other acts that would have been playing, but I can't remember who they were. But that's the story, you know. I know Wayne stood Steven like, Man, you know, that's off Bullshit yeah. Man. It's pretty it's great, babe, you know. You know. I think you guys would listen to us a lot, man. <laughs> How cool was that, Mama? Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, for everyone tuning in right yes. now, Stephen will be back later in the program. Yes. And we have a super fun game with him that we're going to play, too. But how cool is it to get in the inside of a guy that yes. met Paul McCartney, the stories about the yeah. bubbles and their classic records. Yes. Uh, but it's yes. time for a yes. movie buff game. Mom, you. Yes. Well, you were in pictures, baby. We talked about it. You were yes. bat, Mom. You were yes. in pictures. Yes. Well, let's play. And we talked earlier about yes. weird movie buffs. We love what well, we yes. watched. Parasite oh. this week, right? We have a hard time finding a movie because we have watched every movie. Watched them all, baby. We watched them all. But I've got today a yes. few that maybe you haven't yes. seen. Okay. Uh, they may not be the cream of the crop, but okay. they are summer camp related. Oh, uh, okay. We're going to play a game with you guys called Rotten Tomatoes. That's right, Rotten uh, Tomatoes, yes. where we're going to give you a series yes. of films, and you got to tell us what the Rotten Tomato score is. That's right. It's from zero to 100, baby. What is the score? Yeah. And if you guess yeah. enough correctly... Then you win a pound of coffee from North Coffee Coffeeers. Okay. Okay. These are summer camp theme films. All right. Let's We're get ready. to the first one. Folks, put the number of the film and yes. uh, the Rotten Tomato score and okay. the name of the film or the number one. We'll call this okay. number one. Number one. It's American Pie Band Camp. Ah. Have you seen any of the American Pies? No. No? You're not familiar with Stifler no. or Stifler's Mom? <laughs> No, no. no this, none of this is, is clicking with mom. <laughs> we want to know what do you think the score of American Pie Band Camp is? This is number one. It's from 2005. Okay. You know, there's films about like yes. essentially, yes. you know, end of high school teens yes. figuring out their life in the world yes. and, and maybe also... An exciting time, excepting for probably right now, but... Wow, Mom, deep. <laughs> um, so, but back to yes. America by Bandcamp. Yes. Uh, give us what you yes. think the score is. And while people are trying okay. to give their scores, let me... Did they, did, does it have any big stars in it that became there, big stars? Uh, there's just Eugene Levy, who happens to be in every single one of these films. Uh, let's see, we had Nicole at 23 there, Megan at 10, Dax at 27, yeah. Kristen at 7, uh, yeah. But I'll give a quick what review. What was the review? Yes. The review says, we if someone like Eugene Levy can't escape the vicious cycle of these lousy flicks, oh. what hope do we have? Yes. So, yes, he's, he's oh. the one name in there. And uh, I'm happy to say that uh, oh. Nicole got it. Uh, she's 6% off <laughs> as the score is 17 and she guessed 23. Yes. Kyle coming in right at the buzzer. You guys got to be uh, lickety split quick. Uh. Our uh, fans know how to punch these in yeah. fast. Whoever can get the answers and, quick and enough. And so that we'll was that Nicole, one. right? That was Nicole. Good job, uh, Nicole. A previous contest winner. Yes. Uh, but Kyle's been Kyle's been edging in there. Yes. He's been getting some good guesses on the yes. game tonight. So yes. I believe him. Let's go to the second yes. film tonight. Yes. It's called It Takes Two. Holy sweet moly, it's the Olsen twins from Full House. Oh, Yeah, yes. from 1995. Yes. Here's the yeah. synopsis of this film. The Olsen yeah. twins yeah. meet at a summer camp then try to get their adopted parents to marry each other. <laughs> oh, good Lord, what sweet fun it is. Here's a review yes. from TV Guide who said, yeah. Adorable Munchkins or Cloying Brats, Aww. you be the judge. Aww. Yep, that's right, Mom. They were not Aww. fans. Seth says Aww. 85. 85 was <laughs> Seth's guess right there. He's a big Olsen Twins fan. Big Olsen Twins fan, not just with Full House, but also with... Uh, I like the Olsen Twins. Kyle says three, Dax says two, yes. Kristen says 19, Kara says 17. Wow, yes. You know what? We're, we're going to have to give this one. I've been, ta I've been saying his name. Yes. Kyle McClendon. He's been guessing on all of these. The ah. score is eight, and he guessed three, and that's only five off. Wow. So, Kyle, my friend, you got... Nicely done, Kyle. Number Nicely done. two. Yes. It takes two. It takes two. Now, had you, you haven't seen yes. either of the films so far. No. Let's see if you've seen this one, Mom. <laughs> uh, this is a 2007 classic, Daddy Day Camp. There you go. <laughs> the sequel to Eddie Murphy's Daddy Day Care, starring Cuba Gooding Jr. There's been no joke said. Uh. But mom thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> this is the most laughs that have ever been elicited from daddy day daycare. Camp. <laughs> day camp. That's right. This isn't the care. This is the camp. Um, oh, dear. Oh, my. Indeed. Oh, dear. Indeed. <laughs> um, let's see right here. From 2007, yes. here's a review, yes. which says, parents 
Yeah. Hire a bouncy house. Put on clown paint. Make balloon animals. You need not see this. <laughs> Nicole's giving us a seven. Oh uh, we my. got a nine out there. We got a... Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. And Megan Russell. Yes. My dear friend. Yes. Hit it on the nose. And that's when we stop, baby. That's right. It's a one percenter. It's in the one percenter club. That's right. It got a singular percent, meaning essentially one person went, "Mm, oh, okay. I like Cuba, you know. Yes. Not. I don't really Uh. like his daddy day camp, though. Yes. Well done. Wow. So we've got a three-way tie. Let's see if either Megan, Nicole, or Kyle can get the final film today. This is it. And I think it's a summer camp classic because it's Ernest Goes to Camp, Mom. Oh, yes, Ernest. Remember Ernest? Now, for millennials out there, you don't know what an Ernest is. Yes. Ernest is essentially a lovable loser. Yes. uh, And in this film, he works at a summer camp. And the great thing about Ernest that I'm going to touch on right now is that basically what me and Mom are doing with you Mm -hmm. when we talk to camera is how Ernest talked to everybody. He'd go, you know what I mean, Vern? He'd go, hey, Vern, I'm over at your house. Vern, Vern, Vern. (laughs) He'd always talk to Vern. I got Kanye West back here. Vern, you like my movie, Vern? What do you think scores, Vern? (laughs) That was his whole jam. Less frenetic. I think I've, there's something, I hope there's not white powder on my mustache. Let's not give it away. It's tough times, folks. It's Ajax. Uh, It's a a cheap, we've got a a 37 from Kristen. Kyle going with a 72. Uh, There's a lot of reverence for this, and I'm surprised. Dax says a million. Yes, Um, yes. We've got, uh, Micah says the book was better. (laughs) Man, do I need some of those sweet, earnest books. Uh, I want people to know, too, this is the first of nine Ernest films oh. where, where Jim Varney played this rambling wow. American goofball. Wow. To talk so to Vern. people love, love Let's see, it. we got Megan saying four right there, Nicole saying, Vern, Vern, you, you think it's 23 <laughs> there, Vern? You know what I mean, Vern? You know what I mean, Vern? Anyone who's tuning in right now that's under 30 is like, this guy's lost his mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But his mom's very supportive, and his yeah. dog clearly doesn't give up. <laughs> hey, what's happening over here? <laughs> you know what I mean, Vern? I got to do. Let's do Kanye uh, as Ernest. Kanye as Ernest. You know what I mean, Vern? Come on. Uh, Vern. Oh, you, you better have mean? a good co- you know I mean, hold Vern? on. Come on, on Vern. Kanye. Mom. Uh-oh. He's my bestie. Of course I, I take care of him. Uh, I think all the guesses have stopped pouring in, or people have stopped tuning into the show. <laughs> Whichever it is, <laughs> I'm, I'm stoked for this. We have a new audience member who won tonight. Yes. It is Kyle McClendon. I think he, Yay! I, I want to say he might have been, I'm not sure if he's the person who first came to the show and said, what is this? <laughs> but it clearly he's, he's gotten on the old bandwagon veto. Uh, the score uh, is 62, Mom. Wow, that's not bad. No, it's not bad at all because the truth is yeah. that Ernest is an American classic. It's a classic. And so Kyle said 72. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. good for you. Yeah. Kyle, uh, you know what I think we're going to do? What are we? Uh, we're going to invite rock and roll legend oh, Stephen Drozd yes. back over to mom's yes. house. Yes. So all you Flaming yes. Lips fans, it's a joyous time, my friends. Let's get yeah. back in our bubbles and bring in Stephen Drozd. <laughs> He's a, he's a mudadoodle. He looks like a Bichon, but he's not. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh you, make, you make ours look so filthy. <laughs> he's a rescue from uh, McAllen, Texas. So. Oh, so cool. And, and we got yeah. a rescue from Tulsa down here, but I'll, I'll bring, bring him oh. up in a second. But we were a dogless family till uh, last summer, 2019, because our son has really bad allergies to dog dander. Yes. But we yeah. found this dog through a place called Doodle Rock Rescue because they rescue hypoallergenic dogs. We want to pay a bunch of money to get a special one. That felt weird. So we found this guy, Lucky. I call him Mr. Woof Woof also. Oh, Mr. Woof Woof. Yeah, and we love him so much that we decided to get a second dog. And we got Frankie, who's down here. We got him about, <laughs> we got him about a week before the quarantine started. So we've had these two beautiful little doggies with oh, us. Oh, <laughs> goodness <laughs> gracious. Look at Yeah, keep him around. This is ours. This oh. is Kanye Westy. Kanye. He's my, he's my bestie. All right, I love it. I love it. We'll get to a, a couple of uh, uh, audience questions from Twitter in a second, but uh, mm-hmm. I want a big, big shout out to your home yeah. state of Oklahoma, uh, yeah. who made your song "Do You Realize" the state rock song. Mm-hmm. This is true. Uh, how do you feel yeah. about that? 
Oh, it was, and when it happened, it was just, yeah. uh, it was so surreal, but fun and great. And we have an alley named after us in, in Bricktown in Oklahoma City. We went from, the Flaming Lips went from being this sort of like pimple on the underbelly of the city that the city would want to talk about <laughs> to being like, let's give these guys their own street or alley and, you know, give them all this attention. But I think it, it's just because over the years, I think a lot of people, the only thing they know about Oklahoma City is that the Flaming Lips are from, from there, you know, and all these other country acts and stuff. But um, yeah, the way it came about, well, it's on my po the podcast we did, the Sorcerer, Sorcerer's Orphan. I guess maybe you listened to that. To yes, uh, everyone should check out Sorcerer's Orphan in general, but the most recent one, you orate this history of mm -hmm of simply the song, Do You Realize? And you have guests mm -hmm. that include Oklahoma politicians and Ben Gibbard of Death Cab for Cutie. Mm -hmm. And you hear demos for the songs and you talk all the way up and it is truly wonderful. And you are a great orator too. Well, thank you. I, you know, I, I wonder if people think I'm just sitting there talking, it's all scripted out. And, you know, um, we do it here in this little studio here, my, my place. And I do all the editing and all the engineering. But Wayne's right here with me and we're working on it together. We decide like, what bit of what music and what we want to talk about and the timeline. Oh, so cool. We discuss all that stuff together. Then I text it out and then I read it. And if it doesn't sound good, I do it again. So it's very, it's very scripted, but it's all based on, you know, we do our research and I have a pretty good memory for all that stuff anyway. So, but I feel like we don't go so deep that if you don't know anything about music, you would get bored. We want to make sure that people that don't know much about music or music theory or whatever won't get bored. You know, so we, we try to kind of walk the line of, for the super duper fans that want to know anything they can find out to the, the casual listener who's like, oh, I kind of like that song. I should check these guys out. You know what I mean? We're trying to kind of keep it in that middle ground area, if that makes sense. Well, and you had said you referenced that song as being one of those songs that you got casual fans from it. And then mm -hmm. they checked out other music and said, oh, I like the Flaming Lips. They're mm -hmm. rad. Um, so this, that, that this is true. Yeah. Um, we meet people all the time. The first thing they heard was, do you realize? Or they saw us play She Don't Use Jelly opening for Candlebox in 1994, and they came to see Candlebox, but they thought we were interesting enough to check out. You know, that, there's a lot of that that happened over the years. So We got some fan questions from Twitter that mm -hmm. we thought we would throw out quick. Um, I'll throw this one out. This is a fun one. What's your favorite road meal? Favorite road meal? Yeah, road meal. Road meal. Like, just anywhere. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always feel like uh, stir fry, Thai food's just a safe wherever you are. That's probably going to work out on the road. Yeah. So. Stir fry, yeah, good, yeah. good call, yeah. good call. Thai stir fry, you know, chicken or beef. Yeah. Yes. What's your earliest musical memory? I I go back and forth on this. It's either um, the Three Dog Night song, "The Ink Is Black, The Page Is White." It's either that or Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Or was, was a bullfrog. Bull yeah. <laughs> was a good friend, friend of mine. Or Man, our band's gonna time, be sweet, mom. <laughs> it's either that or Coconut by uh, Harry Nilsson. You know, or, I don't know that. With the lime and the coconut. Oh, <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Or good, yes. good Time Charlie's Got the Blues by Danny O'Keefe. It's a really sad kind of country pop song. Yes. It's one of those four is my first musical memory. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Wow. They're, kind of, they're kind of fighting in my headspace for like, yes. that was the first yes. one. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's or, awesome. Uh, and finally, for fan questions, yes. um, five favorite drummers to listen to. Now, you don't have to do all five, but who are like, do you have a, a, your, your top drummer list? Um, if, I, if I want to specifically listen to drums, I would say there's, there's probably a list for that. Yeah, it would definitely be John Bonham. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jackie Libesheet from uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right from Can. Just you can listen to the drumming on those Can records, and it's you know uh, Ringo Starr, um, Bill Ward from Black Sabbath, Stuart Copeland from The Police, um, Bill Bruford from Yes, uh, Neil Peart from Rush. Sometimes I have to be in a certain mood. Uh, Dale Crover from the Melvins, Mac McNeely from the Jesus Lizard. The list could go on and on. Oh, so, I love this list. This list is great. Yes. Excellent. 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 Yes. I like yes. Murph from uh, Dinosaur Jr. There's like three three album period there where he was man, he was yeah. kicking some serious ass. So yeah. Super cool. Oh well, <laughs> yeah. thank you to the fans for yes. for the questions. I want to close with a game. Let's have a little fun. Yes. Okay. Sounds uh, good. You're in the Flaming Lips. We got a game called Famous Lips. Okay. We have six pairs of famous lips. Okay. And you, my friend, 
You just have to guess who they belong to. Okay. You ready? Let's, yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. Famous okay. Lips, Famous. number one. Steven Tyler. Boom. Steven Tyler, you he got, got it. it. Well got done. It. Famous right. Lips. Okay. Number, number two. two. <laughs> okay. Oh, beautiful lips. Oh, man. I don't know if it's Look her. Look at that. Speaker. Oh, I want to say Scarlett Johansson, but is it Angelina Jolie? Bingo, yeah, my friend. That's two for it. two. You got it. That's you right. Got two it. for oh, two. Yeah. Here. Okay. Famous Lips with oh, Flaming Lips. Stephen Jones. Three. Okay. Well, that's Jack Nicholson's Joker, I believe. Or, oh, is it the wrong Joker? You, you got, got it. it. You got it. Boom. No, okay. That Nailed was it. great. That was, it was right on. Well wow. done. Well done. And you know the difference is he had sort of the plastic surgery, yes. like lifted cheeks vibe, yes. whereas Steve right. Ledger had the like cut into his face himself vibe. Well, then there's the Cesar Romero or the guy that played the Joker on the series. Right? Oh, good I mean, point. Good point. Oh, you know what? That could, be, could, could have been dastardly for me to do that considering mom was on. <laughs> Batman, but no, you're still perfect score. Three for three. Okay, here we go. Very okay. good. You Famous. know your lips. Come on, 30 years. Of course he does. Yes. 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 All right, we'll see. Very good. Famous lips. Yes. Number okay. four. Number four. Okay. Oh, another okay. set of beautiful this is lips. Tough. There's now, you crazy. haven't had any clues on these, but each wow. one of them I was more than willing to give you profession. So I will tell you as you're, as you're speaking into these, yeah. this okay. is a... Famous singer. Okay. Can I ask one question? Yes, have you we may. Worked, have we worked with this person that you know of? I looked it up, mm -hmm. and you have not. Okay, we have not. But okay. as in relation to working, trust me, my friend, she does work, 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 work. Oh, man. It's not her. It's got to be. Um, this uh, is killing me. I, I'm really getting nothing. Um, that doesn't seem right for her. Um, is it Missy Elliott? No, I'm sorry. Oh, That's a good oh, guess with the color. Good. That was good. But the one that yes. works, 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 it? works. I didn't know. Her lips look perfect under an umbrella. Under an umbrella. It is Rihanna. Oh, my wife would kill me for not getting that. She loves her. So if Becky, oh. my wife, were here, she would have gotten that one right. So What a ra rad rock and roll thing to say. Most people would go like, well, I was looking at Rihanna's lips too much, and uh, my wife got mad. And <laughs> Stephen says, if my wife would be so pissed, I didn't know it was Rihanna's lips. <laughs> you guys are cool. That's Very true. cool. All right, here we go. Number okay. five. Number five. Okay, five. Legendary lips. Yeah. I okay, I'm saying, I, I think it's the... Uh, Cover for the first Cars record? Uh-oh. Maybe. I cannot fact uh, check that. Yeah. But do you know the legendary person these lips belong to? I, is she an actress? She was an actress. Good, good mom. There's a uh, clue I up I here. The wrong, I got the wrong thing, yeah. Um, I don't know the, the person's name, so. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. No, it's not Marilyn Monroe. That doesn't look right. It is. I will it give is. it to you. Oh. It is Marilyn No, we're giving it to you. You said it. You Listen, said you said it. nobody else. Yeah. You said nobody else. So that's the correct answer. Well See, done. I have an excuse. I, in my mind, yeah. all these are music related, but no. I mean, no. Marilyn Monroe, it's not that she's not music, but she wasn't a performer or anything. So yeah. in, in my mind, I thought it, was a, yeah. it must be another music person. So I thought the yes, Cars' yeah. first record album cover yes, is the yes. woman smiling with her hands on the uh, steering yeah. wheel. Oh, excellent. We'll right. have to patch that in. <laughs> right. right. At risk of copyright infringement. Okay. Yes. And now the oh, final oh, one. Oh. You're doing four out of five. Let's close strong. Is this number six? This is six. Oh, that this is my hard least favorite pictures of me, so I know it's me. <laughs> it is you. You got it. I don't like that picture of me. I, I, I know what that picture is. So. Oh, I'm sorry, oh. but it's a picture. But it, oh. but it helped me get it right, though. So. Oh, good job. There you go. Good that job. was well done. Yes. I kid yeah. you not. In the comments, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was yeah. someone who said uh, Angelina Jolie, like we did it twice, and that made me so happy. So look <laughs> at you with your sexy lips. <laughs> They're all pursed and weird looking. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, you have uh, you are one of our all time favorite lips. Uh, thank you so much for yes. joining us, Stephen. Well, this is a real pleasure. Yes. New album coming. Oh yes, yes. American, American Head. Head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. September 11th is coming out. September 11th, uh, 2020. Uh, what, Eddie, tell us about American Head. The the record is it's kind of our. There's a lot of acoustic instruments more than the last couple of records. There's a lot of acoustic drums acoustic guitars there's a lot of electric guitar a lot of pedal steel a lot Ooh. of uh, 
orchestral instruments, less electronic. There are some electronic elements, but a lot of big group harmony vocals. So it's got some soft bulletin elements about it. Um, oh, rad. And uh, w- yeah, Wayne started calling it our Tom Petty record. And I thought, man, that's kind of cool. We, like, we've never been like an American band. We are an American yes, band. Yes, yeah, yes. but we've never like, you know, labeled ourselves as, hey, we're American, but this yeah. is, we're kind of going for it on this one. So it's called American mm-hmm. Head. And all the songs are, it's kind of wistful and nostalgic feeling. And I think, uh, you know, of course, anyone that's been around for 40 years always says, I think this is our finest record yet. <laughs> that's usually not the case. But, um, but I really, I really like it. It's my favorite record in, 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 in some years. So that's oh, amazing. Uh, we're always working on something. You know, we always have a pile of like three songs that are just kind of sitting there. We're not sure what we're going to do with them. So, oh, so in, cool. Yeah, in the last couple of years, I started to get a little pile of songs. Wayne had a couple of songs. And what happens if we're lucky is uh, we get enough songs together and then Wayne will start to come up with some imagery that's going to be the album cover or the font for the, you know, the typeface and the font for whatever the album cover is going to be. And usually when that happens, it really kind of everything coalesces. So we had three or four songs and uh, we sat sat down one day. We were up at uh, the studio in New York, New York State, Dave Fridman's Tarbox Road Studios. And Wayne was like, what if we you know, it, from moving forward from this point, frame all the songs in this kind of area of um, when we were growing up, when we were teenagers, when we were kids, and you know, our older siblings doing drugs, and people getting into car wrecks, and people dying, and tragedy happening, and all the things you you feel when you're a young teenager, or super young, or whatever. What if we kind of make that the feeling going forward for the rest of the record? And he said, I think I want to call it American Dead. And I'm like, oh man, that's really cool, you know? Mm-hmm. So, American had the name of the record. Any message for America? You, America, you have your your Twitter avatar is you with the mask, you know, which we all appreciate. You know, obviously Oklahoma was home to a recent rally uh, that mm-hmm. I won't say anything more about. But do you have any anything yeah. you'd like to say to the people as an election is coming and as we continue to try to yeah. uh, get out of this pandemic? Sure, sure, sure. Uh, first of all. And- Everyone says this, but man, everyone's got to register to vote, everyone. And if anyone thinks that uh, their vote doesn't count or there's, they're both the same, both the candidates are the same, you're fucking crazy because that is not the case. So everyone needs to vote. Everyone that can vote needs to vote. And wear a damn mask. That's all I got for you right now. <laughs> Man, that's a sweet <laughs> message. And, uh, and we like it. We, we, we like love it. it. Yes. I much appreciated yes. our sentiments. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let let it be a flaming lips future. Yeah, it was really good to see you again. It was good Thank to meet you. you. And uh, very nice to meet you, Stephen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Let's let's stay in touch. And when all this madness is, well, yes. we don't know what's going to happen, but yeah. let's stay in touch and try to yeah. try to make some connection down the road. So right. That would be great. It's a true honor, my friend. I really yes. appreciate it. Be well yes. and uh, yes. have a great evening with your fam. Signing off. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you, Sergeant I'm Steven. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. What a fantastic message. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That's right. Wear a mask, mask you dumb. dumb. Wear a mask. Wear a mask, you dumb. Wear a mask. All right. Uh, but most of all, thanks, Stephen. Thank Come you, on. Stephen. Round of applause. Big round of applause. The legend from the Flaming Lips. Yes. That Stephen Droz for coming over to Mom's house. So much fun. Thank you. So much fun. It was just incredible. I yes. got to meet him at, at this music festival outside of Portland five years ago, and he stayed in contact, and uh, and we're talking about yeah. collaborating on a children's show together. So yes. wild, wild things can happen, and hopefully yes. we get that Flaming yeah. Lips future where we can all run around in bubbles. We don't uh, want it forever, yeah. but if it's for right now... Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that rocks. Um, yeah. Yeah. We gave you four glamping items. You yes. had to guess the price yes. of them. Yes. We're going to do it again. We got four more of them. Let's go to number one. Number one. The rocket fishing rod. There it is. Look at that child. <laughs> just uh, just loving it. It's all right, Rick. We can, we can slide and we can move. Mom, come over here so you can see you amidst that child shooting what looks to be a uh, Nerf fishing rod. It uh, launches 30 feet. And well, let's be honest, why would you go back to fishing conventionally if you could do that? Uh, why would you sit there yeah. just going like this when you could be like, yeah. time to rock from the 90s with my bright orange shirt, girl, uh, got yeah. a fish. Yes, I agree. Um, so uh, number one, yes. Yes. rocket fishing rod. People, guess how yeah. much you think it's worth, whoever yes. can get the most. They're, yeah. they're not going to win a bag of North Fresh coffee. Oh, no. We already got rid of yes. those tonight. Okay. Uh, we're going to do 
something just yeah. as cool, oh. and that is you're going to win this it's snack hat. So if you thought the glamping item that you're, we're talking <laughs> about is hilarious, then uh, you're going to actually get one. We're going to mail you a snack hat. That's right. It's a hands-free <laughs> <laughs> uh, plate that you wear on the top of your head will send you snack hats. So that's what you're competing for right now. Uh, Lindsay said 21. Uh, Dax said 18. Uh, and then laughed at the laughed at the word rod. Uh, Jesse said 36. And holy cow, what? we got a perfect guess. Elliot Martinez guessed it on the nose. It is 49. 99, my friends. That's right. 49.99. You got wow. a perfect guess. That's right. That's the rocket fishing rod. Excellent. Well done. That's right. And Kristen can't believe it. Excellent. But everyone play along. You've got your chances to guess on yes. the, uh, our glamp stamp items because you could win a uh, snack hat coming yes. to your door. Whether you want it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want snack hat? Look at how incredible snack hat is. Let's get number two up there for glamp stamp. That is... What is that? It's it's the what second it? best pun of the day. Yeah. It's hand espresso. That's right. Make espresso while you camp with no electricity. If you thought you look like a dick ordering from Starbucks, <laughs> imagine what you're gonna look like down by the river <laughs> when you're dispensing your own hand espresso. Wow. Uh, that's number two. We need your guess, folks. How much does this glamp yeah. glamping item cost? Yeah. What do you think, Mom? Forty nine ninety nine. Good guess. That's what that's what Elliot got the perfect score on the <laughs> rocket fishing rod. Maybe I learned. <laughs> I'm learning here. Let's see. Let's yes. see what people guess. Yes. All right here. Mom says forty nine. Forty nine ninety nine is probably always a good guess. To be honest, mm -hmm. had you done that in the first round, you'd probably get two out of four right just based on that guess. Yes. Nicole's saying twenty two. Yes. Kristen is saying uh, thirty nine seventy nine. Yeah. Uh, Seth says. Two ninety-five. Uh, Dax says thirty-eight dollars for one jittery bear. Uh, <laughs> Jesse says thirty-five ninety-nine. Kyle's going with twenty-four. Yeah. Uh, our winner of Rotten Tomatoes tonight, yes. Kyle McClendon. Yes. Let's see here. Uh, Dan Pope says twenty-nine. Yeah. Uh huh. And you said forty-nine ninety-nine, right, 49 .99. Mom? Forty-nine ninety-nine. Forty-nine ninety-nine. For the hand espresso. Yes. And mom, I'm here to let you know yes. that you're our winner for that one. <laughs> uh, because no one guessed close enough. Dax yeah. said 38, but it's 80. So mom's guess is gonna do for that one. It's 80 bucks to have your hand espresso there. I went the wrong way. To have your here, hold on. <laughs> let me see if I can. Uh, let's go to number three, the yes. portable washing machine. Holy smokes. Oh, that, everybody needs that. No, they don't. Take yes. that, <laughs> take that uh, R2-D2. Uh, no quarters I required the, or wires out in nature. I thought the idea of camping was not to bathe and not to do, wash your clothes. Well, that's not like the point of camping. It's just sort of like a, a byproduct of camping. You don't go into nature off the like, ah, I'm going to go out and stink, thank God. Uh, Dan Pope saying $299. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Nicole saying yeah. $329. Kristen oh, saying... Goodness. 92. I mean, it's a, it's a portable washing machine. Oh, you got to have some I bucks. mean, the, here's the best thing. The portable washing machine is behind. Yeah. yeah. The fake portable washing machine is in front of what is the real portable washing machine. Yeah, yeah. It's called a river. A river. A river. That's yes. insane. I love that yes. they sell it that way, too. Yes. Like, yes. it'd be one thing. Dax says yes. uh, 380. Yeah. Kyle says 300. Jess wow. says 50. That's the thing, Mom. They're, 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 mm. They could put it in a desert, and you'd go, oh, okay, you know, yeah. I'm out there, and there's a sandstorm or whatever. Yeah. They're by a river, like, yeah. hey, you lazy piece of <laughs> garbage. Oh, and, uh, we don't. Mustn't insult that, people. Well, they're they're <laughs> fake people, Mom. They're not real people. Uh, we had some really good guesses there. Yes. But that's yes. a Nicole win at yes. three twenty nine because it's three forty nine. Wow. Yeah. Well done, Nicole. Wow. You got to have money coming in. You do that. have to have money to wow. buy that. All right. We've got a three way tie wow. between Mom, Elliot, and Nicole. Uh, <laughs> but it's anyone's game as we go into the last one. Boom, bubble oh. tent. That's right, <gasps> bubble tent. Come on over here, Mom. <laughs> Wait, Mom's in the bubble tent. <laughs> Mom, how's the bubble tent? It's wonderful. Wow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, keep it up there. This game's too much fun. 
<laughs> it's so good. Oh I'm, man, I'm going... thank God my mom is taken care of during this pandemic, but I want to see her just really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going with $500. Mom says $500. She's sitting inside her <laughs> bubble tent right now. This is in tribute to Stephen Drozd of Flaming yes, Lips, yes. who, of course, in the Flaming Lips, they at Coachella, yes, and I yes. touched it as we talked about earlier, had yes. their bubble at the, yes. the festival right there. Yes. Uh, Kyle saying 2000 kind of exciting. Elliot saying 3999 uh, Wait, Mom. <laughs> How much do you think it costs? Did you already say? $500. Oh, get back in there, Mom. <laughs> Megan, Megan Russell says $2,500. Uh, <laughs> that's right. The bubble tent, the, 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 we got a 10000 from Rick this set. What do you think? 10000 Mom, is that too much or, or not enough? Uh, get back in your bubble. <laughs> Oh, Ashton says 700. 7,000. 7, 7,000, he's saying. Yeah. All right, I'm here to let everybody know. Yes. Mom, you can come out the bubble. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, your you know, bubble's it was gone. It's getting a bit hot in there. Uh, it is $1,570. <laughs> so I believe that oh. Dan Pope and Kyle's guesses of 2,000 wow. were the closest we have. Wow. So we've got a big tie here, yeah. my friends, but, I'm, but a tiebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. Is when you guess one perfectly, and Elliot yes. Martinez guessed forty nine ninety nine on the first one, as we had a four way tie. We, yes. you know, yes. no one got two of them correct. So Elliot, yes. coming to you down in Eugene, I'll be mailing you your sweet, sweet snack hat, baby. We're, we're gonna we're gonna end tonight with a special yes. stand up comedy performance. Yes, from our writer. That's right, Dax Jordan. Uh, yes. He went out uh, into the 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 hills outside of Los Angeles. And he took a drone with him because the only way he could film himself doing stand-up ah. was, was, to, was to bring a drone out there. That so he did a stand-up set, not just with a drone, but about drones. And we're going to let him end the show tonight. So, uh, Rick, hold tight real quick as we say yes. we yes. love everyone who tuned in. Yes, Tune in next Sunday. Stay with us to watch. Right. But let's, 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 yeah. let's, let's do our <laughs> – I got that one. Why? Yeah. You were great. I was great. Yeah. Kanye was great. Yeah. The audience was great. Everybody. And now they get to enjoy the greatness of Dax Jordan. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next yes. week. Enjoy our Dax Mwah! See you next week, guys. Bye-bye. A lot of people are afraid of something that's very, very common and getting more common. Drones. Guys, drones have been around for a long time. Actually, hundreds of years ago, they would use them on the battlefield, but they were just balloons with wicks and bombs attached. Imagine trying to launch these and being at the mercy of the prevailing winds, praying to the gods that they were on your side for this one battle. Well, here we go, guys. Oh shit, they're coming back. Bail, bail. So they put those aside for a couple hundred years until World War II, when the Japanese launched 9,000 balloons incendiary balloons that were going to cross the Pacific Ocean to light America on fire. But the only time the wind blows from Japan to America is the winter. So nothing happened. 9,000 attempts actually did kill some Americans. A picnicking family in central Oregon. No sandwiches were recovered. Those were the only deaths Decades later, they found one unexploded in the mountains of Wyoming. Unexploded. That was classified as the first smart bomb because it was smart enough to know not to bother blowing up any part of Wyoming. <laughs> so they was put away for a little while. And then finally, in Vietnam, we figured out how to remote control an airplane with a video eyeball on it. And carpet bombing villages became our number one export. So obviously, the idea of a drone became scary because we used it for nefarious purposes. But now, they're small. They're called quadcopters, right? They've got four little beanies on them. Hashtag quad goals. It's a billion dollar industry. There's a lot of buzz. They're very noisy. There's a lot of possibilities with drones. And don't be afraid of something just because it came from the military. I mean, look at Kevlar used to just be used for bulletproof vests. Now we use it in our car speakers, right? I'm just driving down the 405, carpet bombing it with 
fresh air on NPR. Don't be scared. Obviously, the killer application is always sex of any new technology. Except for Kevlar, of course. We don't need that because consent is already bulletproof. Can a drone get me sex? I know you're asking that. Flying it? Probably not. You should have stayed working at GameStop. You'd actually have better chances there, nerd. But if you've got a drone, that is the ultimate peeping Tom weapon. Fly up to any window, see what's going on in there. In fact, if I owned a drone company, I would also own a company that had a detector that closed your blinds when it saw drones coming. One of the best applications people are hoping for is deliveries via drone. Imagine getting food delivered, right? A bucket of chicken wings or a tikka masala flying through the sky. Finally, chickens can fly. But you're gonna want a second story window because imagine being a starving homeless person on the ground, just looking up, watching food just out of reach whizzing by. No one's gonna want that delivered to their front door because someone's not gonna have a problem mugging a toy for food. Thank you very much, that's my drone bit. Bye-bye! Yes. Hey. Yeah. What? They're still here. What? It, what? What are you guys still doing here? Go to bed already. <laughs> Go home. Get your own tent. Me and Mom are cooling out. That's it. That's the show. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Yeah. That's it. All right. I can't zip it because it's stuck. <laughs> yeah, go, go. We'll see you next Sunday, 8.30. Yes. 8.30. Yeah. Watch Time reruns of our show on YouTube or something. Yes. Yes. Oh, then share this, you know, like just share yeah. it or watch it again. Yeah. You know, pump up our views, but, but, we're, but the show's done, right? It is done. Yeah, go. Yes. Come on. Yes. Good night. Thanks for watching.